in our first conversation with the Mortons. Prior to game farming, I was a cattle farmer in the Eastern Cape. I said to my wife, start packing. We're going game farming. She thought, you crazy. And as the years ticked by, I started off with Sable um, and Roan and Inyala. Richard got wind of the fact that Dad was selling the farm and thought to himself, Richard developed the farm to the extent that I was able to move some of our animals over from the other farm to here. So rather than listen to me, why don't you talk to Richard? I started here in April 2004 after showing interest in game farming. At the time I was in business in Joburg, recently married uh, and working two longer hours. Um, the key with this property was finding a bush clearing solution that would turn it from a, from a farm that had a very low carrying capacity into one that could hold a certain a number of game or cattle that would make it profitable. So I did a lot of research on the internet and found a, a caterpillar machine for sale in America which, with a mulching head, which was a, a demo unit, and we imported it. And in fact, I was the driver of it for the first year. Uh, started from really very humble beginnings in a caravan and a bush clearing machine. And uh, we, we, we had a plan. Well, the first thing was to establish a herd of sable and roan on the property to start earning some form of income to pay for the development. Even though at that stage we still had two farms. And I established the, the first two camps and moved animals in, on, in 2005 already. But this farm was a completely undeveloped piece of land, which was actually quite nice because it gave me the opportunity or gave us the opportunity to plan everything from the beginning, from the electricity, through the fencing, the boreholes, the, 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 the workshops, the sheds, the feeding areas, the houses, everything we did from scratch. There was just one small building on the whole property, which is now where our staff live. So it was, it was a humble beginning and we worked really hard over the last 13 years, but we have now completed the entire development of not only Mount Joy, but we've purchased uh, three other pieces of land. So we've increased our size now to 3,600 hectares. And about six years ago, uh, running the farm on my own, with just a few staff, I realized that the operation had got to a size that it was almost becoming impossible to handle the marketing side of the business and building our brand, as well as running the development side and as well as taking care of the breeding part of the property, which was the record keeping, obviously everything that goes into to breeding quality animals. And that was at that point that I felt I needed to find the right person to help me establish uh, the, the, the breeding plans for our farm and to carry on working and, and, and achieving the goals we had set years ago. And I knew Henry Stratum from Shambhala. I gave him a call. I was looking for a young guy, not necessarily actually looking for Henry himself, or I was very pleased that he uh, applied, is I actually was asking Henry who else he knew, that he had a friend or someone in the industry that he knew would suit our, our type of business because he knew us well. And it just happened to be that it was at that time that Henry was actually looking for a change and, uh, and accepted to, to come and work at Timbani. And it's been a great six years together. And Henry runs our entire um, breeding side of the business. And to help him, initially he was actually running the farm to the breeding, staff, maintenance, everything. After a while we realized the farm had grown once again and we, we uh, employed a, a maintenance manager. Uh, Manus Moolman, who, who handles the staff and the maintenance side of the business, which frees up Henry to concentrate on just the, 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 game, the game aspects. The majority of South African farmers are good producers, and that is just one aspect of the business. You need to be able to market your animals, whether it is through hunting or live sales or any form of, of, of sales for your animals. And I realized early on that we needed to establish a brand, number one, so that we were known in the market um, and we needed to establish a, a methods of selling. And one of those methods was uh, through an auction and we formed uh, what in those days called Specialist Game Breeders was our very first auction and then year two became Stud Game Breeders. And that has been uh, a fantastic vehicle for us to, to become well known in the game industry and we are six prominent breeders that have been going for a long time. So that through Stud Game Breeders, we've been able to build our Tembani brand. 
by having an annual auction and by every year improving the stock that we're able to offer the market. On top of that, you've got to, uh, your integrity has got to be at, at a top level. Um, you know, one bad sale and you've ruined your name. So it's very important to us that we deliver a service, that we deliver our animals successfully, that the, that the person that believes what he's buying is actually what he receives at the end of the day. And we establish, we keep that relationship going with our clients after, after they've bought from us. And uh, that is a very important part of the business, as well as you know, private sales. And often here yeah, it's about engaging with the person timelessly and getting the right information to them, pricing your animals correctly and, and, and completing the sales. And through that you need to be very active in the market to understand what, what, what prices are doing. But in order to achieve all this, you need good record keeping, you need good photographs of your animals, and you need stats. And that is where Henry Stratum comes in, our breeding manager who handles all aspects regards to the animals from a record keeping perspective, the game capture side of them, the DNA, so that we have accurate records when we're selling our animals. Next time, when we continue our conversation, we talk to Andrew Strijdom. From 2012, I've been here by Richard Angesleid, from Shambhala. I've been here by Hulle Angesleid. I've had buffels and Hulle verkoop from there and here too, so I've had Hulle good gekend, the family. The year has been going on, we've had a lot of good genetics on what we've had to do with Tony, and Hulle good combined to go to the good deal. And we've never had onszelf op vergelijk onder die troppen onder mekaar en tegen ander ouens om voor en toe te gaan. Ons teelplan bevat baie van kruisteling. En wat is kruisteling of hybrid vigor, soos die Engelsman so sê? Ons filosofie was nog altyd om extensively te boer, maar met intensieve bestuur. Dis hoe ons het benader hier so.